Hey, what's up there, YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, aka Gamer55551. And I am back with a My Chew Scent video for this week, for the week of March 1st to March 7th. Um, as you all know, um, this week uh, the Switch has turned three years old and the PS2 turned 20 years old uh, this week. I'll be doing a video on that one, on my thoughts on the Switch's um, third anniversary, and my thoughts on looking back at PlayStation 2 turning um, 20 years old. But in the meantime, we got uh, five stories to cover this week. Uh, two of them have to be related to the whole coronavirus situation that is really starting to have an impact on uh, the gaming industry and in lots and lots of areas on this one. We also have a report on basically, you know, the wonderful 101. Some interesting tidbits have come out about it, including the whole Kickstarter. Uh, full disclosure, I am one of the folks who did back uh, the wonderful one on Kickstarter. Um, and we also have a report on the whole issue of violent video games and the APA's um, reaffirmed stance on the whole issue indeed. And Ubisoft is making some supposedly pulling what Bioware did with Anthem, or what they're trying to do with Anthem with um, Ghost Recon um, Breakpoint. But before we get started, we'll get started, before we get started to those five stories, we'll get started a quick rundown on the quick My Two Cent part. Uh, the first one I do want to talk about is the fact that Zombie Army Trilogy for the Nintendo Switch has a release date. It was basically, from last time I checked, it was March 30th, um, 2020 though, for those who are not familiar, that game is a spin-off to the Sniper Elite series. It's more, at least from the way I see it though, it's more action-oriented than, say, stealth-oriented that the whole Sniper Elite series is famous for. Um, it's nice that that game's coming out later this month, even though, uh, Sniper, or, uh, excuse me, Zombie Army 4 is currently out right now on PC, um, PS4, and Xbox One, but nevertheless, Looking forward to Zombie Army Trilogy coming to the Switch. Um, hopefully, if it's possible, this opens the door for Zombie Army form to make its way over to the Nintendo Switch. We also learned that Primi, P-R-I-N-Y, um, 1 and 2 Exploded and Reloaded will be coming to the Nintendo Switch. For those who are not familiar, that is a spinoff uh, from the Disgaea series. It stars those little penguin-like Primi things. You know one that says Dude, D-O-O-D. Um, I believe it's basically like it's like it's a 2D type of a game. I think a 2D, you know, a bit of a yeah. It's sort of a 2D um, a type of a game though. I played a little bit of it on the PS PS Vita though, or and the PSP. They're kind of fun in the way. So great that they are bringing that over. Another thing is that we now know that um, Luigi's Mansion 3 has been updated to I think 1.3, which has the new. DLCs for the or the multiplayer DLC. Some of them have Luigi wearing armor, um, dressed up as a mummy or in a disco suit. Um, it's nice that Nintendo is still supporting the game, although I am a little disappointed that they're not putting in any more single player DLCs. I mean that, or not putting any in Luigi's Mansion 3. That that would be nice if they could do that though, but unfortunately it doesn't look like they're doing that right now. And last but not least, we now have a release date for the. PlayStation um, upcoming game Coast of Tsunami T S U S S H H I M A. I apologize, I'm not saying the name correctly. Um, the release date now is June 26. So um, let's see, it's March, April, May. So it's about three months off, though. Um, barring unless there's any kind of last-minute delay or anything like that, um, the game definitely does look interesting. And being that it's from Sucker Punch, that did the um, Sly Cooper, Infamous series. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how this one plays out when it comes out on June 26. <clears throat> All right, with that out of the way, we'll start off with our first story. And this one has to do with, unfortunately, GDC 2020 and, of course, what the face of E3 might be. Now, I'm sure most of you have heard on the news at this point. We've seen um, the whole coronavirus situation. We've heard seven, ranging from several reports to deaths and all that stuff to certain events and being postponed and canceled to even certain games being delayed. Um, one of the games I was looking forward to this on the Nintendo Switch, um, The Outer Worlds, a port of the one of my favorite games of 2019, unfortunately was supposed to come out um, this week or March 
on March 3rd, but got delayed due to the off the studio that's working on it, Virtuos, had to because of the whole coronavirus situation, which, while unfortunate though, it's understandable why the game had to be um, delayed. Well, it looks like we're starting to see the impact on not only game development being delayed, but also events and so forth. And it looks like um, GDC has bitten the dust on this one, and it is possible that E3 could be next. Um, we'll start with the first article from um, Tech um, um, Tech Radar, and it reads that quote: "GDC 2020 indefinitely postponed after losing Microsoft, Sony, Epic to coronavirus." It reads: "For all its antivirus protection, the tech world is coming to a realization that it's no match for a deadly biological virus." Not only has IDC already predicted that this novel coronavirus could lead to a decline in PC sales this year, with so many factories shutting down and demand already dropping, but also many tech trade shows and events have already been canceled. The latest in this sting of cancellation is the Game Development Conference GDC in San Francisco. It was supposed to take place from March 16th through 20th. According to an update on the GDC website, info... Um, Informate Tech, um, I I N F O R M A T E C H. Apologize, I'm not saying the name correctly. The organization behind GDC um, has made the difficult decision to postpone the game development conference um, this March after a close consultant with our partners in the game development industry and communities um, around the world. Um, it's no surprise that GDC 2020. Ha- when he finally threw his hands up in defeat. GDC 2020 had been gradually shrinking, shrinking in the last few days due to big exhibitors pulling out. Sony and Oculus were the first ones to go, pulling out more than a week ago, followed by EA, Hatiki Kojima, PlayStation, and Facebook. A day before the cancellation, Microsoft, Epic, and Unity also dropped out, with Microsoft citing concerns for the well-being of our teams and community due to the growing public health risks with the coronavirus. With so many big players dropping out, it was just a matter of time before other exhibitors follow suit, and the numbers of conference attendees would have considerably dropped as well. Facebook One has said that it's advising all employees to refrain from traveling to the show. The San Francisco Bay Area has rec- has recently announced two community transmitted cases of the coronavirus. This has prompted some media outlets to dub Northern California the epic center of what officials are calling the turning point in the spread of the highly contagious coronavirus. So having a massive conference with attendees from all around the world sharing game co- consoles, VRs, headsets, and other game related tech might have not might have not been the best idea. It concludes that it's not all bad news. However, Microsoft is planning to host a digital-only event for March 16 and 18, so it's still set to make the announcement it plans to make at the conference. Yeah, so... It, and it's... This is definitely not good. I mean, it is a little unfortunate to see that GDC will be canceled or at least postponed um, this year. But, yeah, I mean... The health and safety of these people are utmost important, and it is a very um, big concern for a lot of people, though. So it, it 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 is very unfortunate this is happening, but it's definitely probably the right call to make. On top of that, um, e, um, ESA it might be basically canceling E3 2020 this year, though. I, the story on Game Industry Buzz said that. Originally, um, they were moving ahead with it, though, but then they updated the story recently with, on March 4th, reading that, quote, With the city of Los Angeles having declared a state of emergency today, the ESA has issued a new statement on the situation. The health and safety of our attendees, exhibitors, partners, and staff is our top priority. While the ESA continues to plan a safe and successful E3 show June 9th to 11th, we are monitoring and evaluating the situation daily. Our E3 team and partner continues to monitor the coronavirus VI, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, and the World Health Organization. We are actively assuring the latest information and will continue to develop measures to further reduce um, health risk at the show. Um, they also said, quote, the city of Los Angeles, which has declared a state of emergency, um, 
The state of emergency offered the following guidance. The state of emergency allows the city to continue to qualify for additional fundings needed to prepare for the coronavirus in the future if, su if such fundings are needed at all. City officials will continue to prioritize measures and guidelines that are, f that are focused on clean clean cleanliness and safety. Um, they also said that the city of Los Angeles website is source information location. They said, again, please know that we will continue to, eva to evaluate new development and provide updates as needed. So while it doesn't sound like the ESA is pulling the plug on, on E3 at this moment, I would not be shocked if I hear that e E3 this year has been canceled because of the coronavirus. I mean... It I think that we may have to realize that there are going to be a lot of events, especially gaming events that a lot of us were looking forward to this year. There is a reality that a lot of them could be canceled. We could see them be canceled due to the whole coronavirus. And I would not be surprised if we see some games um, get delayed because of the coronavirus. I mean, nor will I be shocked if we hear like the PS5 or Xbox Series X gets delayed because of the whole coronavirus situation. Now. I will admit it's a little too early to tell. So far, neither Microsoft or Sony has said anything in regards of, you know, the PS5 or Xbox Series X getting delayed or anything like that. But I wouldn't be shocked if we hear if that happens. So um, I will say overall, it is disappointment to hear that um, the CD GDC 2020 has been canceled. But I but like I like with the whole situation with the Outer Worlds on the Nintendo Switch. I understand the situation is I understand the situation. I think their health and safety is way more um, important. As for down here in Southern California, I will say that I would I would say this though. I'm not freaking out or anything like that, but I am monitoring the situation, um, keeping an eye on what's what's going on, and of course, you know. Washing your hands, washing your hands, and washing your hands. Though that's probably the safest thing I could think of that you can do, though. So overall, disappointing, but understand why uh, GDC 2020 was canceled. <clears throat> okay, uh, we're gonna take a quick break. When we get back, we're gonna get to part two, and this one has to do some information we got on the wonderful 101. Some new information and some. Um, something that Platinum admitted, admitted in regards of the Kickstarter for the wonderful 101. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part two of our My True Scent video. And this one has to do with um, the wonderful 101, especially the Kickstarter in general. Um, before I begin talking about it, full disclosure, I may have said this earlier, but I'll just say it again just in case. Um, I am one of the folks who backed this game, and any opinion I have on this on this situation is my opinion, my opinion alone. I'm not being paid, sponsored, or endorsed by either Platinum or Kickstarter in any way. Now, I'm sure most of you are aware about the whole success story with the whole Platinum doing the Kickstarter for the Wonderful 101, a game that was considered that gained a following on the Wii U, but unfortunately it became a commercial flop. Some can point to some point to the control scheme to the game, others point to, you know, the Wii U being a failure and all that stuff. But either case, whatever the case may be, the game didn't exactly sell very well. So it was kind of interesting to see when Platinum decided that they were going to quote bring the wonderful 101 back vi kickstarter and it was also surprising to hear that nintendo seemed to be okay with this though well recently we learned a, a couple of things though um one um platinum was terrified and wasn't sure if the kickstarter would be a success it turned out it did and we learned that it hit the two million dollars which means that luca's second mission is going to happen but two stories that kind of caught my attention on this had to do with the issue of the ownership of Wonderful 101 and a recent comment about that they made in regard to the Kickstarter that, well, let's just say some people are going to view, some people may view this as being like they were conned or something like that, depending on how you want to look at it, though. We'll start off with the first one in an article from Nintendo Life in terms of the ownership, though. And the article reads, um, quote, 
The impending release of the Wonderful 101 Remaster is one of the most surprise development of 2020 so far. Originally published by Nintendo on the Wii U, the game was something of a commercial flop at launch but quickly gained a cult following, a following which had gleefully jumped on board with this updated version. Platinum has always maintained that the remaster has only been possible thanks to Nintendo's cooperation and that it has triggered debate about who actually owns the IP now. There were rumors at time that Tencent recently recent injection of capital into Platinum Game was used to purchase the IP from Nintendo, but the Japanese studio is refusing to talk publicly about ownership, at least for the time being. Um, in an interview with the Structoid, Platinum Hadi Kamir, who was asked who actually owns the Wonderful 101, and he replied, quote, Thanks to the kindness of Nintendo, we were able to do this remaster, but unfortunately we can't give you any details regarding who owns the Wonderful 101. Um, what does this actually mean? Well, perhaps less than you think. Dashing video game detective and occasional Nintendo Live contributor Liam Robertson qu quite, quote, quite rightly points that this is exactly an unusual stance for a Japanese company. Person writes, it's always been jolted always been jo jointly owned and then refu then and them refusing to comment on the status of it is normal for Japanese studios in my experience they generally don't like to discuss such arrangement uh, such arrangement with the public it's possible they're in the process of changing who owns what percentage of it possibly but I think you'll get this coy response from them at any point so it's unclear at this time who owns the right, it's basically, if I'm reading this correctly, of the wonderful 101. Um, some have pointed to Nintendo um, still owns the rights and all that stuff. But, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if at some point down the road, we hear that Platinum may find a way to get full rights of the wonderful 101 back from them, though. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if that happened, considering the game was unfortunately a commercial flop on the Wii U. Compare that to, say, Astro Chain, on the other hand, which obviously was a commercial and financial success for both Nintendo and Platinum. So I can't see them giving up Astro Chain, at least Nintendo, giving up the rights to it anytime soon. Wonderful 101, given how that performed, that might make a little bit more sense and all that stuff. But we'll have to wait and see. But I wouldn't be surprised at some point down the road we hear Platinum got the rights back to Wonderful 101. Speaking of Wonderful 101, um, Platinum recently came out and made a comment in regards about their Kickstarter. And based on their response, at least if I'm reading this correctly, it, there is a good chance this might rub people the wrong way, depending on how you want to um, look at this. In the same article from Nintendo Life, it reads, Platinum Games emits Wonderful 101 Kickstarter had nothing to do with raising funds. It was more about grudging or gaining interest, though. The article reads, quote, Japanese studio Platinum Games shocked quite a few people when it launched a crowdfunding campaign for a remaster of the Wii U title Wonderful 101. Not only was the game a Nintendo exclusive, it was something of a commercial flop upon release. Platinum Game later revealed that it had done a deal with Nintendo to relaunch the title, but there was still question over why the company decided to take the Kickstarter route, especially when it was confirmed that the game would be would release in May of this year. In an interview um, with GEMATSU at PAX East, um, Platinum Games um, finally admitted what many had suspected. The Kickstarter wasn't anything to do with raising funds, but more to gauge, gauge interest in such a project. Uh, one of the statements reads, quote, While the actual reason we decided to do a Kickstarter campaign was not for funding at all, it was more about gaining interest in the wonderful 101. This is a game we always wanted to revisit at some point in time, so we thought it would be a good opportunity to bring the fans together, to unite them, and gauge interest in and in essentially to release the game <clears throat> excuse me so it wasn't really about the amount of funding at all it was about self-publishing bringing fans together and revisiting the one for 101 um, when asked what the what the kickstarter funds would be used the head of platinum game inaba added first off the money is going towards the production of all the goods 
I don't know if you've seen all the tiers and their rewards, but the but those cost money to produce. The rest of the money is going towards the additional content that will be added into the game. All that costs money and it takes time to work to port the game to the additional platforms. I want to clarify that we didn't do the campaign to get money or anything like that. That wasn't the point. The main goal was to bring fans together, grudge or G-A-U-G-E interest and find a good way to, re to revisit and release the game. Now, I can see where that kind of comment and all could rub people um, the wrong way and why some people may not be happy about it. We've seen in the past how Kickstarter has, we've seen how there have been scams and all that stuff. I mean, we all remember the whole Mighty Number no. 9 debacle of a mess and how that turned out. And then there was sort of the situation with Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, although to be fair, that one at least ended a somewhat of a more positive note than what Mighty Number no. 9 did, although the Switch version, that they really dropped the ball on that one, although it's now they're improving and fixing a lot of the problems that obviously should have been addressed at the beginning in the first place in regards to the Switch version. But I could see why some people might be upset with this because it gives the impression that they've been scammed or conned or any way like that, though. Um, we'll have to wait and see what happens when the game comes out to see if it um turns into another mighty number no. nine situation or if they actually um deliver on it though i think that given platinum's track record i think they'll deliver on this one just fine but their statement i can i definitely can see where there's some concerns and why some people w could uh, could view this in a way as like they've been tricked or they've been conned or anything like that but I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure this doesn't feel like this is a mighty number no. nine kind of a situation, but I could be wrong. I but I, that, I just don't think it's that kind of a situation. So overall, right now they're not talking about in terms of who owns the rights for the wonderful 101, but I would not be surprised if I hear one day um, Platinum finally got the full rights to it and all that stuff. And to the Kickstarter, as far as their comment about it though, Again, I don't think they're, they were trying to scam us in any... I don't think this was a con or them trying to scam us. But I can see why some people, why their response to it might have some people thinking that this was a con or a scam. Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, we're going to get to part three. And this one has to do with a report in terms of the whole violent video games and violent behavior so we'll take a quick break and we will be right back okay and we are back with part three of our my true scent video and this one has to do with a report coming out from the apa in regards of the whole violent video game and violent um, behavior and all that stuff. Now, the whole violent video game issue has gone around for um, a long, long time. From back in when I was back in like the 80s and the 90s. I remember when we had this with when Mortal Kombat came out on the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo and all that. To the infamous 1999 Columbine High School shooting in Colorado that brought up the issue of violent video games to what we have seen recently whether it's in the parkland shooting to to politicians jumping on board whether it's donald trump joe biden or for folks like me back in the 80s and 90s the infamous lawyer jack thompson and all that stuff so the debate has kind of gone around and some people have sort of countered the debate like i feel that video games have evolved to not being the kids only product like they used to i mean that's not to say there's anything wrong with making video games for kids or families or anything like that but it is important to understand that kids aren't the only people that play um video game well recently a report from the group recently a report from the american psychological association has released um released some info or at least reaffirmed some info of the link between violent video games and violent behavior. According to an article from Game Industry Buzz, um, Biz, I'm sorry, 
It says, quote, APA reaffirms stance on video games and violent behavior. Attributing violence to video game is not scientifically sound and draws attention away from other other factors, says APA president. The article reads, quote, the American Psychological Association has said that attributing violent behavior to video games is not scientifically sound and draw attention away from other contributing factors. The comment follows a review of the APA's August 2015 resolution on a link between violent video games and violent behavior, which members of the media or policymakers have cited as evidence that violent video games are the cause of violent behavior, including mass um, mass shoot, shoot, shootings. Um, let's, not, let's not forget, I feel that some of these politicians, as a side note, some of these politicians who complain about violent video games, I'm pretty sure some of these are the same politicians who get donation or lobby for the NRA, in case you're wondering who the NRA are, the National Rifle Association. As a result, the the APA has reaffirmed its position that there is no casual link between violent video games and violent behavior. It's also stated that the updated resolution should not be misinterpreted or misused by attributing violence such as mass shooting to violent video game use. While the current literature supports a small reliable association between video games and aggressive outcome, such as yelling or pushing, the research does not find a conclusive link with more violent behavior. Suggesting that violent video games are are contributing factors to mass shooting dated back to Columbine Massacre in 1999, despite the body of evidence against such a link, media and policymakers have reportedly pointed point the finger at video games in the year since. Violence is a complex social problem that likely stem from many factors that warrant attention from researchers, research policymakers, and the and the public, says the um, APA president. Attributing violence to video game is not scientifically sound and draws attention away from other factors such as history of violence, which we know from research is a major protect, protector P-R-E-D-I-C-T-O-R, apologize for not saying anything correctly, of future violence. So in other words, to make the long story short, they are basically saying that there is no scientific sounds that links violent video games to violent behaviors. And honestly, I think this is an old argument that needs to go away. I mean, yes, are there some gamers? Not everybody who plays video games. I just want to be absolutely clear about that. Not everybody. Are there some that take it maybe a little too seriously and so forth? Of course. And I do think that there, I do think to some degree parents need to be aware of what kind of game their child is playing and so forth. But to continue using blaming violent video games and blaming video games as the source of society's problems or all these mass shootings, I do think this needs to, to stop. Blaming violent video games for all of today's problems is almost like what we saw back in the 1920s when alcohol was blamed for all of society's problem and the whole push of prohibition which later ended in the 1930s just got a little bit of a history lesson right there if i assume i said it correct and all that stuff so to me it is a dumb argument and it like i said the argument does need to be put to rest i mean let's be clear video games there are going to be different types of video games there are going to be some targeted to children there are going to be some targeted to adults and many people are going to like different varieties of games i like different varieties of games as well on one hand i'll play a game like luigi's mansion 3 a fun non-violent type of game that's silly and enjoyable especially seeing the expressions on luigi's face <clears throat> excuse me but at the same time i'm willing to play um, a game like Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, a game that is a hard, you know, M-rated game, which is sort of the equivalent of if a movie were to get like an R-rated and all that, which is, which, and I certainly don't have any problem with any of the violence, language, nudity, or sex in that, in that game at all. And I think it's time, and honestly, I've played different varieties of games and I don't, and I I just enjoy them. I just relax and just enjoy playing them. I don't have like violent urges or anything like that. So I would say overall, great that the a APA comes out of this. Do I think this is going to change the whole violent video game issue? 
I don't think so. I think we're going to see some politicians out there and some people still use the violent video game um, argument. But I think it's getting to the point that we need to sort of put that argument to rest um, once and um, for all. <clears throat> okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, we're going to get to part four. And this one has to do that Nintendo is joining with Microsoft in a new policy that they're putting in in response to the whole coronavirus um, situation, which is which is being called the work from home. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. OK, and we are back with our fourth part of our My Two Cent video. And for this one, we're going to be talking about Nintendo joining Microsoft in a new policy they're doing titled Work From Home, which has to do in response to the whole coronavirus situation. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the first part of our My Two Cent one, we've been hearing that I've talked about how, you know, the coronavirus is starting to have an impact on a lot of things. I mean, We've been seeing, you know, certain industries being hit. The video game industry is no example of that. I mean, even travel industry is going to be hit by it. The stock market has recently got hit by it, though. And so it looks as though some companies, um, particularly in the game industry, are looking at ways to try to keep, um, try to address the coronavirus while at least trying to minimize, you know, the impact on, on their, you know, on their business and so forth. And it looks like, Nintendo is joining, like I said earlier, Microsoft in doing that. In an article first posted on Kotaku, um, it reads that, quote, um, Microsoft and Bungie enact work from home policy in response to the coronavirus. And I'll bring up the Nintendo one in just a minute. It reads that, quote, the ongoing coronavirus epidemic has hit the video game industry in major ways, most notably resulting in the postponement of the GTC last week. As a response to the virus spreading to Washington's King, King County, Microsoft and Bungie, both of which have office in the area, have decided to enact a work-from-home policy in an effort to keep their office workers safe. In a message sent yesterday, Microsoft's exclusive vice president encouraged employees in the company's Redmond and Bay Area office to work from home until March 25th if possible. Roles that require on-site work such as data center and retail locations are not included in this plan, but there are exceptions for those who are above 60 years old, pregnant, or otherwise at risk due to un un undeniable health conditions. Microsoft will continue to implement the CDC's guidelines for cleaning and sanitization these locations. Bungie's, whose headquarters is also located in Bellevue, B-E-L-L-E-V-U-E, -E -E, apologize, I'm not saying correct, the name correctly, Washington follows suit today with a statement of its own. With the threat of the coronavirus growing in the region, Bungie said it has implemented a remote work infrastructure to both ensure employee safety and maintain development specifically on Destiny 2 and its upcoming downloading content. Bungie's approach to the um, coronavirus outbreak is designed to react to rapid change as news dictates, including how we will reevaluate, re, re eventually re in integrate employees back into our local office once the threat of the virus has lower, Bungie said in the statement. While this is a big change for Bungie, we look at the challenge as an opportunity to stretch our abilities to create and deliver the same kind of quality gaming experience we always have in a new way. Be well, take care of yourself, and see you online. Um, this new work from home policy extends to every Bungie employee, but the studio doesn't foresee any change to the release of Destiny's Choose expansion Season of the Worthy on March 10th and Trial of OSIRIS on March 13th. Kings County location in Central Washington includes some of the state's largest cities, including Seattle, um, Bellevue, Kent, and Redmond. Since the coronavirus arrived in the area, 31 people have been affected um, and nine have died. Kotaku has contacted Seattle area firm Nintendo and Val about their plans to address um, the Kings um, County coronavirus outbreaks in their respected office in Redmond and Bellevue. Again, I apologize for not saying that name correctly. Now, recently after that story came out, 
it was reported that Nintendo has now joined Bungie and Microsoft on this. And they have recently released a statement reading, quote, um, Nintendo of America has taken pre precautionary steps to allow NOA employees in the state of California and Washington the opportunity to work from home. The safety and well-being of our employees is our top priority. We are continuing to closely monitor the coronavirus development and share our concerns and support to those affected by the coronavirus outbreak. So they're basically um, joining with them and taking steps. And honestly, I think that is a good thing. And I'm glad Nintendo, along with Microsoft and along with Bungie, are doing what they can to to basically minimize the impact um, the coronavirus has onto them, though. I mean, I know it's not everyone likes to hear that or anything, though, but I think um, precautionary steps need to be taken in order to address, you know, address the concerns of where people are having with the coronavirus. I mean, I think it's the right decision to do. And I've said this before, and I say this again, um, the health and safety of these employees are um, more important than anything else. So this, so overall, smart move on Microsoft, smart move on Bungie, and definitely smart move on Nintendo for doing this work at home um, policy for right now because of the whole um, coronavirus um, situation that is going on. <clears throat> okay, we're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, we're going to get to our fifth and final story. And this one has to do with apparently Ghost Recon Breaking Point is looks like it may go down the route that um, Bioware is doing with Anthem right now. Um, so we'll take a quick break and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with our fifth and final part of our My Two Cent video. And this one has to do with Ubisoft's Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Now, obviously, um, most of you are aware of what happened last year with Ghost Recon Breakpoint. The game got hammered by a lot of people, including reviewers, over the game being incomplete, broken, some viewed it broken buggy, buggy. Some people said it followed the same um, Ubisoft formula that hasn't really changed at all. It got to the point that the game actually became a commercial flop when it came out. It was, I think the game came out last year. I'm not 100% sure, but I could be wrong. But it was so bad that Ubisoft really had to reevaluate their position, their, a lot of the stuff they were working on. Some of this led to the delays of a lot of their games, including what was supposed to come out February 3rd, Gods and Monsters, a game that was being developed by the creators of Assassin's Creed Odyssey that was coming to all the systems, including the Nintendo Switch. But unfortunately, since we didn't see any gameplay footage, it was, well, we, no one knew what the game was going to play like or anything like that. And that was impact, that game got impacted, impacted because of Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Well, it seems as though it looks like Ubisoft is basically pulling what Bioware is doing right now with Anthem, which sounds like they're trying to tear it down, re-examine the game, really look into it and see what they can do to try to fix it, to make it the game that, to make it a game to see if it can bring people back or anything like that. Whether that can, whether that will succeed or not remains to be seen. But several articles have pointed out on this, but in a post from Ubisoft, um, it reads that, quote, Ghost, we know that many of you have been eagerly awaiting to hear more about our plans for the future of the game, and our team is excited to finally be able to share an update about what we've been working on. First, um, we wanted, uh, they talk about the Terminator Live, live event, but let's skip that one, okay? Um, it talks about their update 2.0, which is currently splashed for March 24, which will be our biggest, most complex update to the Tom Clancy Ghost Recon Breakpoint, which will include new narrative content tied to Episode 2, PvP updates, new classes, many quality of life update, as well as new immersive experience for the game called the Ghost Experience. Basically, the Ghost Experience, you have choice of immersive, regular, and custom. It says, quote, after the launch of Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint, we decided to shift our approach and refocus our priority as a team. 
Gathering all the data and feedback we could, our team created the Ghost Experience, a game mode that gives our players the option to create their own personal spec off journey. After months of development and several play tests with many type of players, including Delta Company, Delta Company members, Tom Clancy, Ghost Recon, Wildland players, and new players to the franchise, we are now ready to introduce the Ghost Experience to you all. Right when you boot up the game, you'll be able to choose from two preset options or build your own combination. Regular experience, which is play Tom Clancy's Ghost uh, Recon Breakpoint the way it was released with gear level and, and tiered loot. And miss immersive experience, a brand new experience of the game that removes gear levels and tier loot entirely and offers a new tactical option or... Um, or a custom experience, choose your own selections of setting to create a personal fit. Um, you'll be able to choose from very for varieties of community request settings, such as stamina management, health regeneration, new hub setting, and more. Um, as we said in our last update, development and integration of this mode has been a complex challenge. We're now almost ready to put in your hands. We can't wait to see how you gauge this new mode on Tuesday, April 24th. So you will have the option to, in other words, it does sound like you'll be able to turn, you know, like the whole loop thing on and off, which some people have criticized that because of the whole microtransactions and all that stuff. Um, they also introduced stuff like um, um, engineer class, um, community request updates, um, gear sorting option, better weapons, increased weapon parts and all that. Um, the gunsmith um, update. They also added um, several new things such as AI teammates, which is they're working on that. Is our team is um, a, our team is continuing to work on AI teammates for implement in Tom, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint. We'll share another update with you in that in the coming month. Um, they do talk about an offline mode, and they say, "quote Tom Clancy Ghost Recon Breakpoint was built from the ground up to be an online experience." We heavily investigated the possibility of an addition, the option of an offline mode, but we were not able to come up with a solution that did not create an unacceptable amount of technical risk. However, with 2.0, we are implementing an update that we hope will alleviate some of the frustration p players experience with poor internet connections. Our team identified that the service that was most difficult for players with inconsistent connections was the one that able that enabled matchmaking. With this new update, play, players who cannot maintain a substantial connection to matchmaking servers will still be able to play solo PvE without being um, disconnected. These players will still have all the functionality of the game except access to multiplayer mode. While in this mode, your friends list will appear empty. The game will regularly retest this connection in the background without impacting your play. You'll be able to mainly trigger a reset, a retest of the connection by initially matchmaking in multiplayer mode. So it, there is an offline mode, but they're not saying it's not, it doesn't sound like it's a, doesn't sound like you have like AI teammates, like play it like a single player or something like that though. Um, hopefully they'll add that down the road, but it's something, but I still would have preferred a single, uh, a solid single player mode. Um, and then they announced that they are canceling um, the Raid 2. They said, quote, Our team was humble and grateful to receive your feedback on Project Titan, which was something entirely new for us and Ghost Recon as a franchise. In our original year run plan, we wanted to follow up on Project T Titan with another raid. However, we want to make sure we are allocating our resources in the best place to create a better experience for our players. In other words, it almost sounds like they kind of pulling what um, what but what Bioware is doing with um, Anthem, canceling their roadmap in a way. Although it doesn't sound like they're completely canceling it, but it does sound like it though. Um, continue on saying, um, with this in mind, we have made a decision to replace the second raid with a future update to the Ghost experience. Based on all the player feedback we received, Steve, online and in-play testing, our team is confident that deepening the ghost experience is the right direction for the game. So, I have to say, on one hand, it's kind of great that they are addressing this, but on the other hand, it does feel like, um, why wasn't this addressed address in the first place, though? You sh basically, like with Anthem, you ship the game that you knew 
wasn't ready, wasn't ready to go and all that stuff, thinking that the pull the patch, like, ship it out now and patch it later kind of attitude, which, well, consumers responded to this and consumers were not exactly um, happy with this kind of situation and all. And now it certainly had a major impact on Ubisoft because, like I said, with the whole, they had to camps, they had to delay um, their games because of what Ghost, the impact Ghost Recon Breakpoint had, though. So whether or not this will bring people back, um, that remains to be seen. It's the same thing with Anthem, though. Could could those games bring bring people back to it? It's possible. I mean, look at what happened. Look with no Man's Sky, look at um, Final Fantasy XIV, so it is a possibility, but but at the same time, it, 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 it may be too little too late, so we'll see how this plays out, though. Hopefully, we'll see if they actually implement a, off, a true offline mode where you can play it as a single-player game with AI um, partners, though, which... Honestly, I think they should have had that in there in the first place to begin with for those who wanted to play it just as a purely single player experience, though. I mean, I don't like when these studios decide to do a, that you always have to have an always online even when playing with a playing as a single player experience, though. I mean, it's one thing to have online functionality and all that stuff, but at least I want to be able to play the game even if for some reason the network is down or if the online is down and all that stuff. So it's better late than never, but it should have been something that should have been implemented in the beginning. So overall, Sounds like Ghost Recon Breakpoint is doing what um, Bioware is doing with Anthem. Whether this overhaul becomes a huge success for them or not remains to be seen. And we'll see if this truly does maybe bring people back and make Ghost Recon Breakpoint a better game than it was when it um, originally launched. <clears throat> Okay, um, this concludes this um, My Two Cent video for, th this, for this week. And again, these are my opinion. What are yours? What are your thoughts about um, GDC, um, the Game Development Conference, um, being postponed though? Do you think this was the right decision to cancel the event? Do you think that they will reschedule it to another date? Or do you think they'll just outright cancel it um, this year and all that stuff? And do you think... E3 2020 will suffer the same fate because of the whole coronavirus situation. What are your thoughts about the wonderful 101 in terms of the ownership and the whole Kickstarter situation though? Do you think um, Platinum got the rights back from Nintendo in regards to the wonderful 101? Do you think they're still, or do you think they still, still Nintendo owns some rights about it? And what do you think of their, about their response about the, about in terms of Kickstarter and all? Do you think their response kind of rubbed people the wrong way? Are you concerned about what their approach to it? Are you not concerned about it at all? What do you think about the um, the APA's um, reaffirmed or their stance on the whole violent video game and violent behavior though? Do you think this will put the whole violent video game issue to rest or do you don't see that issue um, going away anytime soon? What are your thoughts about Nintendo joining with um, Bungie and Microsoft in terms of this work from home policy that they're in incorporating due to the whole coronavirus situation though. Do you think this is the right decision to do or do you think that or do you think some of these companies are blowing this way out of proportion? And what are your thoughts about um, Ubisoft on terms of Ghost Recon Breakpoint? Do you think this overhaul and this update that they're, that they're doing will bring people back to Ghost Recon Breakpoint? Do you think this will be good for the game or do you think it's um, too little too late? Do you agree with what I said in this video? Do you disagree? Do you have a difference of opinion? Um, as always, sound off in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And if you like this video, I would hope you hit the like button. I would appreciate it. And I hope you do subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you do, make sure you hit the bell icons for notifications of any new videos I put up. Also, feel free to share this video if you want to. And feel free to donate to my channel if you like. You could do it through PayPal Me or Patreon. Links will be in the description of this video. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that will be soon. Until then, from Southern California... I wish you all a good day then. Bye.